Hi nerdies, it's Danny, and we're with another episode of Chatting with Nerdies. Uh, I'm here with the co-owners of Awfully Queer Heroes, uh, right. Skald and Kel. They uh, make D and D content for, or they make LGBTQIA-focused D and D content. Indeed. <laughs> um. So, hi. how did you? Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, you guys want to yeah, say hi? hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Um, so how did you guys like meet? Like how'd you get to know each other? Because you're from <laughs> two very, very far points by yeah. what I understand. I call yeah. dibs on this one. <laughs> Go for it. Have it. We, we I am on the west coast of the States and Kel is in the UK. Um so we actually met through the TTRPG community online on Twitter. Um so I had my own account going and then Off Liquid Heroes was doing its thing and I'd actually seen repeated posts about the Kickstarter at that time that Kel was running was for the Tower of the Soul, um, which is the campaign that we actually played through on the podcast. And I kept seeing it come up when I was going through on self-promo Saturday threads and all the various engagement threads that happen kind of on a weekly basis in the community. And it looked really cool. It looked really, really cool. And I liked, I was very struck by the the concept of it was that, you know, you play as, as bad guys. You're fighting against the good guys in this one. And I just thought it was super, super interesting. And so I had left a little comment on the post and, you know, Cal commented back and it turned into a little bit of a compliment war. And we ended up sending, I ended up responding with a GIF and then Cal responded with a GIF. And this, this thread starts to get going. Mm. And then just keeps going and going, and I feel very bad for whoever's original <laughs> self promo Saturday post that was. It's just us because back we went forth. back and forth like fifteen times. We finally, oh, Kel just said, "Look, closer to 50. <laughs> Kel just said, "Look, yeah. we're gonna break Twitter. Here is the link to the AQH Discord. Let's move over there so we don't break the bird app." Um, and then we just got to talking, and then just kept talking, and eventually it turned into. Kel inviting me to be a player on the podcast, which again was for Tower of the Soul in that initial campaign that I'd been looking at. And so that's where it kind of started. And then from there, it just sort of snowballed. So mm. self-promo Saturdays. That's, that's what can happen. Get yourself a business partner. <laughs> <laughs> I just imagine someone like hopping out there like, wow, we've had like 200 comments and then half of it is y'all just chatting. Like it's, a, I imagine it's just a, a cute little sneak peek into someone's life, you know, like, oh, okay. Not what I expected, but it's nice. Oh, the man. funny thing is, it was actually one of my friends, um, Emil, who I have gift wars with him as well. So, but we have hug gift wars. So he'll send me a hug, I'll send him another one, and we just have to keep going until we can't find hug gifts that we haven't used before. So we would, he was occasionally throwing one in to try and derail the conversation of, of uh, appreciation messages, and it just got worse. I think he muted us in the end. I think he gave up. <laughs> I think he gave up. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. that is, yes. I love that. This is such, that's such like a wholesome way to start, though. And then it was we were talking back and forth, and I was taking certain medications to try and sleep at night because I I couldn't get to sleep. So I I would take the medication and then go, I've got an idea, but I ha I can't write it down now because I'm a, literally about to pass out. Started a voice recording on my phone. I was like, scold, scold, scold. I'm about to zonk, but there's this really cool idea that I just had. Hey, this is a trap, and this is an adventure, and this is, this is, this. Five minutes later, I'm still rambling, like, practically falling asleep on my bed or whatever. And then I would send her the message, and in the morning, I'd have, like, multiple replies about it. <laughs> <laughs> we actually, it started when we shifted instead of, into actually making it a business partner arrangement, and when Kel decided to split AQH, it was after, um, Kel had a really crappy run of migraines. Mm. Um, and so I had helped kind of take over and run the Twitter and it went really well and Kel was like hey do you want to help out with some other stuff too and I was like sure so now we both create the content We I traveled to the UK for this last um, UK games convention uh, the UK GE and we both were mm. able to man the booth there and sell some books and it went really well so yeah, yeah. oh that's really cool 
Nice. Yeah, got to meet a load of the other creators in in the TTRPG community, and mm-hmm. such lovely people. One of yeah. them, Josh, a very good friend of ours now, is um, we're just like great collaborating on the next X amount of projects, and he was involved in the last one, which was Adventures in ADHD. And mm-hmm. it was just like, oh, dude, you you make character sheets? Will you make one for me? Like, yeah, I write them. <laughs> yeah. It was just like. Dude, can I can I can I have a cool thing off you? He's like, yeah, I have this cool thing. I'm like, great. <laughs> um, so can you can you tell us a little bit more about uh, adventures in ADHD? Because I just kind of popped over and like mm. saw a quick glance about it. But like, what's what's it about? Like, what does it contain? Like, is it a pre written campaign? Um, so many things. Do you want this one or shall I? Um. I can give the specs if you want to take it after that. Okay, go for it. It's a short mini campaign. It's for levels four to six uh, set in the Feywild. And it's got a whole bunch of... I know it has original spells, but I think it also has Mm. monsters, creatures. creatures, It has the whole setting, the lore, the backstory, all of it. A whole bunch of quests um, all set out for level four through six, roughly. And a bunch of really cool art, too. So... Oh, you so, guys really do it all, don't you? <laughs> we do. So both of us have ADHD and there is no, um, there is nothing within D&D that is helpful to people within that have ADHD or even some of the symptoms of ADHD. And it was, it was kind of bugger, bugging me a bit. That was a slip of the tongue. <laughs> um, so it came about because someone was like said some random thing along the lines of what what would happen if the fate stole your attention i was like you'd get adhd of course I was like, wait hmm. so there's 20 mini quests the, the the quest as a whole is a fae has inher- inherited a domain of delight but he has adhd so he cannot deal with it because like, oh, this needs fit. Oh no, that needs fixing. But oh, that's going wrong. Um, stare at a wall for 20 minutes, uh, which is actually something that I particularly do. And I will just zone out and it's an hour later. I'm like, oh dear, that, that didn't work very well. Right. Um, he gets the procrastination. He gets a lot of different symptoms and he can't cope. So he is attracted to the party's team who it's designed for when they've just leveled up. They're bragging, yeah, we did amazing on this quest. And he's attracted to their bragging of how great they are. And he's like, can can I have your attention, please? I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure, what's up? Which most people would say. And then he's just like, great, thank you very much. But a fae can't give you take something without giving something back. So each character will roll against the table and they themselves have to play out three different traits. But then you have, um, if they don't want to do it that way, there is uh, subclasses which are designed around different traits. So, for example, the rogue can't stay still. If they attack the same target that they attacked on the previous go, they have disadvantage. Oh. And they have lower attack rates. If they disengage and move to a new one, they get a bonus and advantage. Oh. The paladin... Um, It has two different states and they're triggered between the two. Involuntary, when they wake up because they're peaceful, they wake up, they're in shield state because they're not attacking anything. So when something comes to attack them, they will be in shield state, which is a defensive thing. So it has a certain set of spells, it has a certain set of movements and different mannerisms. But then if, say, a party member falls, they can be triggered into sword state which has different spells, different triggers, different options. And they can, so it's a way of playing almost two completely different characters. I'm not going to lie. I might have to hit up my friends and be like, hey guys, if I buy this, who's going to DM? It's so much fun. One of the things that I really liked about it was the way that, um, two things. First of all, it's not structured around a big bad. There's not a big bad you have to defeat because the whole idea is that it's supposed to be educational. ADHD you can't is something beat to ADHD. It's something to understand, not something to destroy or defeat. And another thing that was cool was to see how many people, playtesters and people going through it, realized 
oh, wow, you know, I have ADHD or I suddenly understand my partner who has ADHD and I haven't been able to understand, but now actually playing through it, I do. And then also in the ways that you resolve the quests, because the quests aren't necessarily go out and kill this monster, you think creatively and they can actually help you come up with strategies to help you manage your own symptoms as well. So, yeah. So one of the one of my um, very good friends is a, a playtester for me on a regular basis. And she messaged me after the second session and said, I am so thankful you gave this to me. I was really struggling to understand my husband. I have permission to say these things because I'm not sharing who it is. And I did ask her way before we were doing any interviews. Um, she was like, I was struggling to understand. They weren't having trouble. She just didn't get it. Um, and she was like, okay, you're doing the thing. I don't know why you're doing the thing, but you're doing the thing. And by the second session, she was like, I understand so much more now. He can't help doing the thing. It, it's just something that happens or it's, you must do the thing on some of them. And she was like, I, I'm so much happier. It makes so much sense. It all clicks together. And it was so nice to be able to hear that, that even on the very first two sessions of playtesting, it had helped someone. So that, that was amazing. Yeah. It, it also sounds really cool because it sounds like there's so many new mechanics. That, like, I feel like after you've played D&D &D for a while, you're like, it's it's the same old, same old. And it seems very, like, refreshing to, like, yes. have, have something new, but in, like, the same kind of system that you're used to. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of... I love D&D, &D, but there are a number of different things that bug me about it. So, for an example... Um, in the Tower of the Soul, which we are now playing and was part of the podcast. Pardon me. Um, I don't like the healing rules in D&D, &D, so I completely rewrote them. The whole book has brand new healing rules based on where you sleep, how long you sleep for, what the quality of sleep is, if you're injured, and things like that. So I'm, I don't want to throw it all in at once because that would essentially be rewriting D&D &D and it would be a massive undertaking. <laughs> but doing some per book and some per system, um, module and things like that, it makes it easier for people to process and go through. And this one is a lot of fun because it's got every NPC, there's 20 mini quests with, and with an NPC for each. And every single one of them is a unique ADHD trait. Oh, wow. And they're exhibiting it to its most extreme. Mm -hmm. So one person can't stop running around. And it's it's what we refer to, or some people refer to as the zoomies, because you're like, I've got to do this, and I've got to do this, and I've got to do this. You can't stop. So the whole point is to slow her down and get her to be like, hey, calm. It's You could cast a slow spell on her. You could grapple her, tackle and then grapple. You know, there's different options. Mm -hmm. But it's how are you going to try and role play that? So it's not, I need to punch it. It's you need to help it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That's really cool. And are the mechanics like similar um, or do they kind of overlap in the different like campaigns that you guys write? Or are they just kind of like standalone to like change a few things for this one and mechanics and all that is all standard fifth edition dungeons and dragons so for ADHD more or less. it is yes the tower is a little different but for the most part most of the stuff is standard 5e and then if there's new content it might be subclasses or spells or something like that or creatures um but the rules with some select exceptions are just standard 5e which means that you can insert it into any game wherever you wanted to okay um, and the perk of the um the the mini quests is that they don't have to be done in adventures in adhd if someone wants a random side singular quest they can just pick that out and pop it into their own thing oh okay yeah none of it is i've never liked writing modules and now that Scold is on board, um, we don't write modules that are, this must be run in this exact location. Even the tower, which is a level one through 20 campaign, you can just take out a floor. It's really easy. The whole thing is completely modular. Um, and everything we do is tries to be that way with 
creatures and settings and NPCs that you can just pick up and pop them somewhere else. So that it's oh, oh. drag and droppers and make it as easy for GMs as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, so do you guys have a preference personally about what type of content you like creating, whether it be battle maps, subclasses, spells? <laughs> I you're do love damn, battle maps. I was going to say, you're damn good at the map game. Thank you. Your map game is on point. We're both good at, at maps. Um, I will do a lot of the initial, here is like the basics, and I'll go, Scald, prettify please. And and she spangles it for me. Um, I do love making the, the, the locations. I have a habit of, I just can't write a small adventure we have recently been bemusing this of how do we make a small module of something and I can't. The The next one that we've got coming in September is um, socketed items. It was like, great, great. I can do like two or three of this and a little bit of that. And it's now twice the size. Eh, it just turns out that way. The nice thing is yeah. that when it comes to actually making content, our strengths and weaknesses tend to balance pretty well so for example i love doing descriptions yes. um i do not mind the number crunching with monster crs um and i enjoy filling out story and scenario kel does some mean tables as far as figuring out mechanics and structuring yeah. as well as like the overall layout of the campaign and so we kind of balance each other in those ways and we both sort of work on it to to come up with something i would say for me personally um i think kel's the the the, the battle map pro here but Thank i you. really enjoy doing um descriptive content for mm. monsters and creatures as well as making monsters is fun but also i think coming up with unique settings is also really fun too yeah so. And you are amazing yeah. at the descriptions. Thank I would just turn around and be like, "There's a, a creature. It it does ouch things." And next thing I know, there's like a three paragraph description from Skull going, "Yeah, it's <laughs> this." I'm like, "Okay, it's that." <laughs> that's that's lovely. So, what is one of your favorite things that you've made? I'm like. You're, you're, you're like baby, if you will. <laughs> that isn't released yet for me. What about you for Skull? I will go into some details because I just want to flail about it. But well, see, now I'm curious as to which one it is. Is it, is it the, the, the Tale of Two? Yeah. Or is it, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's Tale of Two. That's going to be a fun one. It's um, going to be a lot of fun. Um, I think of all the ones that we've made so far or that we are currently working on, I, that's a really hard question. Um, Rescue does come real close, though. Yeah, I love Tale of Two because the content is just super fun. Um, the other one, which involves a city that Kel mentioned, the secondary one, Rescue, that one was really fun to work on because it's broken up into these distinct different sections, and it was really fun to play around with the content in each of those because yeah. each section has its own kind of theme, if you will. So you give spoilers. Yeah. yeah um, okay, let's see. I love Tale of Two Queens because one, it's really, really gay. There's a gay so wedding. Gay. There's a gay wedding. It's gay and pirates. There's pirates. So that's just a ton of fun. And then Rescue Rainbow City. I like that one because each section of the city has a different theme. Whether it's all of them are, of course, in our section because it is a rainbow city, color based. But you have different districts, and they all have different specialties and kind of playing around with the themes and that is really cool so for example like the green district has a lot more nature and grass and the houses all have living roofs and the creatures you encounter are more like treants and plants and stuff like that so it was a fun okay one. for myself i swing towards tale of two queens over rescue rainbow i love rescue rainbow city because the whole thing is a rainbow and it's been taken over by something um, which was so much fun to write. Something so incredibly evil. That's oh, that was evil. great. Um, trying to s pronounce the name. I I may have made a mistake in, in the naming of it being particularly more evil than the creature itself. But I won't go there for now. Um, but the Tale of Two Queens, I loved that because 
there's a series of steps. You get arrested for being pirates and you have to break out. Then you owe the pirate queen, so she needs a quest, which is a test. So you have to go to a very deadly island. And this is 17 to 20? I believe so, yeah. Or is it six? Yeah, it's not 16 to 20, it's 17 to 20. Mm. Um, you have to go to a particularly deadly island where we made every single monster, which was so much fun, making a undead lich dragon turtle is is which you can avoid having to fight if you're Don't careful. Don't give it away. That's what I'm, I'm hearing not, I'm not. is party pet. That is that is what I am there are many, right now. many amazing party pets and yeah we came up with what I personally love as so many amazing options and we just well, kind of is- couldn't stop Wait, the last part is them. is the giant gay wedding, yes. and Kel wrote some fantastic like games. So it's not like you actually have to go out and fight something, but for the wedding section of it, you can participate in a whole bunch of ridiculous games. Not you know including but not limited to boat bailing and pig catching. Greased pig, so. yeah, greased pig catching, um, yeah. greased pole fighting. Uh, then I think we wrote a tug of war. Hmm. Oh, there's like 12, 12 15 there's a, there's games that I put in. There's a, there's a drinking yeah. game. Um, there's a lot. And it just is. I really want to play it. I really, really want to play it. Yeah. I have never really th- heard, like thought about like wedding games before. So I think that is really interesting. Yeah. Oh, you also have to kin- kidnap the, the queen that's going to get married. You have to. I forgot about. Un- yeah. You have to. I'm not sure if kidnap rescue, is the kid, right word. Rescue. I think rescue is a little more appropriate. Yeah, it's it's consenting kidnapping. She wants oh, okay, you to kidnap. Okay. Yeah, it's not it's not a dodgy, it's a consenting. Yeah. Pill for a princess, I think we called that part of it. Yeah. 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 It's good fun. Oh my goodness. That sounds, that sounds so interesting. <laughs> I'm I'm hooked right now. I'm <laughs> It's a little ways out. That one isn't Oh, when's that one? It's 2024 like we've got that one? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. We've done a lot of writing recently. Wow, you guys seem like you, you guys seem like you got a lot of good things coming though. It's <laughs> yeah. Should be good. Should be fun. Yeah. Um, so where do you guys like mainly release things on? Because I know you have like a lot of platforms. You have your Kickstarter, Patreon, website. We're in the middle of transitioning currently, um, yeah. and the Adventures in ADHD is the first step for that for us. We are moving our content over to Drive Through RPG. So currently, as of right now, for people listening to this, the Adventures in ADHD will be available on Drive Through RPG soon-ish. Um, it's on our website at the moment, though. Yeah, and on the website you can find all the previous publications as well as Adventures in ADHD. So I would say for right now, the best place to find all of our content is on the website. Um, and soon the rest of our stuff will get moved over to Drive Through RPG. Okay. Um. So what made you guys decide to start creating content? Rather mm. than just like being in a podcast, or like what what made you decide to like go full time working together and like creating D and D content? I was already creating it when I asked school to join me, and it started. Huh, it started because the original campaign, the very very original campaign that Awfully Queer Heroes had, was on Twitch, and the gm wasn't available one week so we had to scramble because we had nothing available to do on twitch um and at that point i wasn't aware that it was perfectly acceptable to say hey we're not here this week we'll be back in a week's time so i went to one of my friends went i have an emergency please whip me up something so he was amazing that was od rights but he's not on twitter anymore unfortunately I don't quite know where he's managed to, but he was a really good writer. And he whipped me something up in the space of a day. There you go. So I ran it. It was amazing. We had a ton of fun with it. I was like, great. This is probably going to happen again. Can you give me another one? I was paying him and everything. Um, So he did. 
And then I realized, why am I paying someone when I could probably just do it myself? But I didn't know how to do formatting. I didn't know how to do the artwork. So it was a case of sort of looking around the Twitter sphere, finding different people to work with and going from there and making it gay because mm. No one, no, at that point, no one was making gay stuff. And I was like, where's all the gay? So, yeah, all the gay. I think a lot of, again, a lot of what's behind Off Liquid Heroes is putting out content that is LGBTQA. That is what we do. That is what we try to put more representation into gaming. And a lot of times people are like, oh, yeah, well, D&D's already gay. And it's like, (sighs) yeah, it's not. It's not. It's really not because you have NPCs where, okay, maybe sort of, kind of, but there's all these sort of implied, they could be things. These are no. This character, when you look at this character's NPC sheet, underneath where it says race and alignment, it is also going to have their gender and sexual identity. And it is not going to be cisgender straight. It's going to be something else. So the whole idea being that it's not suggested it's not oh you know you can play it that way it's no this is queer content that is what we do and making queer spells like you know rainbow uh cape of courage rainbow party uh pride party summon a protective summon, lesbian yeah summon a, a mother of a protective lgbtqia LGBT. person yeah that is so much fun we have yeah. um this spell in our campaign and unfortunately i have been somehow drafted into being the voice of the protective mother of an LGBTQ. No, no, that's entirely on you. You've (laughs) offered yourself for that one. I'm sorry. I don't quite know how it happened, but somehow it happened. And now every time this spell is cast, I have to be the one who verbally harasses the enemy and gives them psychic damage. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. I I love that so much. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think, again, a lot of the, the content creation has been about getting that content out yes. there. And also, and I mean... Not just I, in Pride Month. Oh, gosh, no. The, the, the everyone else that's doing it that I see, it's only ever in Pride Month. Yeah. This is all, all around the clock. All yeah, the time. It's, it's nice to see certain people, when they do do it, creating at those points in the year i love it i have backed them myself i'm certainly not going to argue with that um but i don't think it's enough to only do it one month a year we're here the rest of the time we're getting just as much abuse the rest of the time we should at least get something good from it yeah um as for the bit about content creation i would just say for anyone who's new and getting into it just to clarify it is not lucrative content creation for a tabletop role-playing games it is not lucrative i have a job this is not my job this is a passion project because it does take a lot of time it is a lot of work and the money that you get back from it you will be lucky if you just cover expenses so i have a job kel has a job i'm also still in school so this is this is very much something that we do because we love it not because it's lucrative yeah the most recent kickstarter which was adventures in adhd was the first one I actually broke even. Um, I've been doing this well over a year now. That was my fourth, fifth, fifth book. And it's the first one that I've broken even on. And I'm fine with that because I do it because I love it. And I want to get gay content out there to people. Um, But it's, it's not, it takes a lot before you can be profitable. Mm-hmm. so it's, don't it's lose heart work. if you're not yeah. if you're starting this out and you're just on the first steps of your first adventure do keep going you'll get there it'll take a while possibly but it's worth it yeah also don't quit your day job really don't quit your day job don't quit your day job <laughs> yeah um so I guess I this kind of I kind of had a question about this like any advice you wish you would have gotten coming into this that you could possibly give to other people who are interested in maybe starting to create content themselves or I think I mean to piggyback off what I said before you know again like Kel said only do this if it's something you really love do this because it is something that you love because it is a lot of work and because it takes a lot of time to actually begin to see the fruits of your labor and even then you'll be lucky if you get there so hence the hence the keep your day job. But also the nice thing is that at least in my experience, the community 
in the Twitter sphere of TGRPGs, and he's incredibly supportive and kind. So if you have questions, ask people. 99.9% of the time, people will be happy to tell you, you, you know, I've asked for matters. I've said, how the heck do you do X, Y, Z? And they're like, oh, just, you know, do this or do that. And so people are usually very, very willing to share their knowledge, share their skills. I've had people, when I first was getting into Twitter, give me advice on, you know, make sure you post on the self-promo Saturday days and the whip Wednesday days. Make sure that you are engaging with people. Make sure that you do X, Y, Z. Watch out for this, this, and this. And just being able to have a community that is incredibly supportive. For Mm. things that I wish I knew coming in, the only thing I can think off the top of my head is get everything in writing because you will meet a lot of very talented very enthusiastic people in the ttrpg sphere and it's always good to assume the best of people and people are always like yeah let's do this this and this that's cool that's fun get excited and then draft up a contract make sure everyone signs it make sure everything is clear and laid out at the end of the day so that when it comes down to it after a project has gone through you don't have issues of haggling over price or people feeling like they've been shortchanged or anything like that have the fun have the enthusiasm again because it's not a fully professional sphere that line between casual friend and professional business partner can get kind of blurred with the people that you interact with and enlist to help you with stuff so have the enthusiasm have the friends have those engagements get excited and get it all down in writing make sure it's signed before you go through with a project that is really really important yeah i would purely second everything that school just said i didn't have any mentors if you will coming into the the ttrpg community so i struggled a bit um i am very lucky all the same because i everyone jokes that i have bardic tongue if i talk to people or if i'm particularly wanting companies to help aqh with something just like hey i love your shit it's really cool can i have some please and they give us stuff which is great um and it's it really helped us grow in the initial stages but i didn't to begin with understand that i need to interact with everyone thing because it wasn't something i'd ever done before (coughs) excuse me so now that you know, going along, learning that on my own, that made a huge difference to everyone I was interacting with. Uh, So it is now, I will a couple of times a day just go onto a TTRPG thread or um, onto a D&D one or a Pathfinder one, talk to a couple of people, and then I'm off again. The other thing is, yes, it doesn't have to be a legally formatted, fancy printed contract, but even if it's in a Discord channel saying, this person does this, this person does that, this person is responsible for X, Y, and Z, we all get paid this, this, and this. Do we all agree? Yes, 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 yes. I do that with my friends as well as um, everyone that I work with. My closest friends, if I work with them, it's, this is laid out in writing, just so that we're all covered. I know you're not gonna shaft me, I'm not gonna shaft you, let's have it in writing anyway. Just to, you know, cover each other's backs and make sure that no one's going to be upset about things if something goes wrong because things can often go wrong and it's no one's fault but it makes sure that everyone's happy and friendships don't get ruined Mm -hmm. um so do you guys find yourselves like working with other people and other groups to create content all or the is time. it something that you mm. all the time and yeah. one it's really good to build those connections within the community and two there are things that we for example can't do i am currently mm. trying to learn affinity but we don't have anyone who does our layout which means that we have to pay someone to do the layout for all of our stuff mm. so if you have a project that you want to do my biggest suggestion to you is don't feel limited by what you can do because there are people out there in the community who have skills. Josh, for example, who we were just talking about, is an amazing artist. He's a fantastic Mm -hmm. artist. Um, You've got someone like Bogus Cheesecake, who does great layout, really nice guy too. So my recommendation is 
Go ahead and think big and then plan your budget around that, what you might have to pay out someone else to do part of that work for you. But there has not been a single project that AQH has done that hasn't had the input and help of play testers, artists, content creators. It's really a group effort. And to make something really good, you, oh gosh, yeah, editors. Oh, geez. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you need other people. You need, yes. If you want to be professional about it, you need to get the work of other people involved too. And I would say, even though an editor costs, and it is not cheap to have an editor, um, it is worth it because you get a level of professionalism behind your work for not having spelling mistakes, grammar errors, poorly worded sen- entire sentences, paragraphs, whatever it may be. And that sticks with people. They remember that they don't have to work out what you're trying to say. And that will make them come back because it's the difference between, and I mean no disrespect to absolutely anyone here, but I I myself have backed and purchased projects off of a number of different mediums. And it has been where I found spelling mistakes. I found grammar errors. I found potentially, I mean, I myself found a DC error in my own. That was so funny. DC check, you must succeed 121. It's like, wait a minute. That's all right. Five read throughs and I still missed it. Yep. So get an editor. It does pay off. Yeah. And that was, that one was edited. So things will easily slip through, but it gives me pause to go back to ones that I know have issues because if it's had issues on one and or two, it's probably going to have it on three or four or five. So it's worth it to set that really good look. I've got all my ducks in a row from the get go. And then you get a good reputation and people will be more willing to have a look at the rest of your works, whether it's free or otherwise. Um, so yeah, that would be mine. I, I had like a lot of questions I prepared, but that kind of all went out of my head the moment you guys started talking. And I was like, yes, tell me more. Tell me about the queers. <sighs> Sorry. Well, it's like at the moment, there's on, on our Discord server, I'm actually watching the pings on my other screen, just like ping every couple of seconds because we've got a couple of new people that have recently joined. And I'm like, can we, can we ask you all questions? Do you mind if like I bounce this off you or that off you? And they're just throwing up various different parts of their, their TTRPGs that they're making going, I've made this elf. Please tell me what you think. It's like, cool, okay, let's have a look at the stats. Do you want it D&D balanced or do you want it something else? What is, you know, what is, where are you going with this and what is your rolling system? So they've put all that down. It's like, okay, this might be a bit overpowered. That might be a bit underpowered, but otherwise as a whole, and then just asking other people's opinions on the server as well. It's really nice to see because everyone's just sort of coming through and going, yeah, this part's amazing. And that part's amazing. Maybe tweak this a bit or maybe tweak that a bit and just helping out because they can. And it's also really nice on our server because we have a, the rule section to come in and then it's please pick your pronouns. And as soon as, shall we say, certain types of people see that, they go, oh, uh, leave server. It's like, okay, goodbye. Thank you for not coming. <laughs> so it's it's a nice barrier at the door, shall we say. And it's a very friendly server, mm-hmm. which is good. It sounds nice because it also sounds really like active and everyone's just really working with each other. It sounds yeah. really lovely. I'm like I was I, I'm like sitting here and I was like I feel like I've been missing out on on the the queer content. I was like I'm gonna I'm gonna text my DM. It's like hey hey, <laughs> campaign's great, love it, ten out of ten. But it could be gayer. Everything could be gay. Everything could be gay. That's one thing too, which I mean I would say for anyone who's wanting to do content creation is the whole thing behind this is if you see something and you're like okay, well something's missing. I want to play X. This I can't find this anywhere in the world of D&D. Make it. If you can't find it, make it. Make it. Mm-hmm. And because chances are, if you're missing it and you want it, someone else does too. Yeah. So that's a whole, a whole thing behind it is, again, that there's so much of D&D that it's like, yeah, okay, well, it could be played as queer, whatever, but we wanted something that was more explicitly, almost aggressively LGBTQA because there's just not enough of that out there. Yeah. 
So and someone yeah. recently asked us in an interview, do you not think, and I think you may have worded this differently, but it was along the lines of, do you not think that you go overboard with the gay? Um, and this was actually a queer person that asked us. And I looked him dead in the camera because regretfully I couldn't look him dead in the eye. I'm like, no, no, I don't think we go overboard. Because everywhere we look, every single day, straight and heterosexual, honestly, sex is thrusted literally in our faces. You have it on TV shows, you have it on billboards, you have it walking down the street. It might be some a mannequin in the store. There's gendered things everywhere and it's male female there's nothing else it's forced on us constantly day after day where's the flamboyant where is the non-binary where's yeah. the darling where's the feather fucking boas and then, then of Sorry. course you run into the issue where some people say well if you do make it that aggressive don't you think that you're isn't it about forcing it total inclusion and aren't you potentially making someone who, let's say you have a player at the table who is cisgendered and straight, isn't that making them a little uncomfortable? Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, it is. And yeah. that's the whole point is it's not about, okay, let's all meet in the middle. This is actually pushing back a little and saying, okay, the queers are the ones who've always felt out of place at the table. The ones who always feel odd and uncomfortable and who this whole situation does not benefit. Mm -hmm. So rather than being like, okay, let's make it, more balance it's no let's actually push a little further because that's going to help things sometimes you have to push a little past that to get to a balance point which is here it's yeah. okay let's make it so that everyone who's queer is actually that's what's normal yeah that's what's comfortable that's what is normalized and familiar and all of that this um, is our happy place yeah. it's not the medium where we we've agreed to meet in the middle this is yeah. our fucking happy place where we're just gonna have all the lesbians and the non-binaries and the trans people and everyone is happy here and non uh, there's we have an alarming amount and that's probably due to myself um of <laughs> asexual folk as well it's like oh they're asexual and they're asexual and they're asexual and should i stop making asexuals <laughs> Yeah. But it, it sounds really nice because rather than creating queer content in the sense of just like token characters, which I feel like is seen a yeah. lot in mm -hmm. media, like mm -hmm. the whole cast is like straight cis people, and then you have these two gay people over here. Yeah. 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 They're side characters. And chances are one of them's going to die. Yeah, or something tragic is going to happen to them. Their, their, their partner dies, you know? Um,. But it's nice to see it in such abundance and have it such so normalized, you know? There was a very long time ago, there was, um, I think it was actually a fanfic that I read. That's a little bit awkward. Um, but it was, it was about some TV show that was going on late 80s, early 90s, where someone had just come out as gay. And in this fanfic, the entire world was on its head. Everyone was gay, and then you had to come out as straight. And I think pretty much that's always stuck with me to a degree, because at that point, I'd only just figured out that I was teeny tiny at that point, what I thought was a lesbian. Yeah, wrong. Um, and that has always stuck with me, because we if we said the things to straight people that they say to us like oh my god how do you do it or oh that's brave oh darling i couldn't come out straight oh no 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 not my cup of tea i'm fine i have a straight friend over there but no you do you darling you do you what the fuck? anyway so i think this stuck with me because now i will not write a straight person I will not do it. There was the very first module that we were involved with. I was working with someone else and they, I'm going to put this politely, demanded to add one token straight. And unfortunately, because it was my first module, I capitulated. But I don't work with them now. And on the very next one, they were like, can I add a straight? I went, no. No, you can't. This is as gay as gay can be. And I wrote it and it's staying that way. I'm like, yeah, but that's not inclusive. So I'm like, no, it's not. This is for so the you gays. You can have any other D&D yeah. thing and have straight people. You, if you need it that badly. Yeah. You, I'm like, sorry, if you, but you can go yeah. over there, you know? He was like, but I want to see myself in this module. I was like, and I want to see myself in every other module, bitch. Fuck off. 
And we're like, oh, well, no need to be rude. I was like, yes, there is a need to be rude, actually. There is a huge need to be rude. I am not putting straight people in my modules. And we're like, yeah, but that's not inclusive. I'm like, great. I'm not included in your modules, so why are you including mine? And that was actually the reason that we ended up not working together on further modules because they didn't like that it was entirely queer. I went, my company name is awfully... Scold wasn't with us at the time. I was like, my company name is awfully queer fucking heroes. Do you really think I would call it awfully straight heroes if that was the case? No. But yeah, we, we ended up not... They, they were a good formatter. They, they did original layouts, but um, I, I couldn't... I wasn't comfortable having that because it felt like it was watering it down and pandering to all the others. It's like, no, I want a place for us. Mm -hmm. I want where we feel safe, you know? So it's, it's a little bit of a passion thing for me. I, I get a bit angry about it. Sorry. Well, I mean, hey, that's the point. Again, yeah. this is the kind of work that you do if you care about it, not because it's lucrative. Yeah. Yeah, and I really, really care about making queer as fuck content. I've made races, we've made subclasses. Oh, we need to make pirate subclasses now. We've um, we've done nearly 300 spells that are... Mm, at least 200 of them are gay. At least. Yeah, and then NPCs coming out of all holes that are gay as all hell. And I love it. I love, um, for, sorry, waving things. I really must stop doing that. I love um, Fawkes Roman from Adventures. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Adventures in ADHD. He's wonderfully flamboyant. Mm -hmm. He's very, a very spangly archfey. Yes, very purple haired, flamboyant fey. Grand fey? What is he? He's um, archfey. That's the word. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's really interesting. Because um, I, I'm... I I don't know if this is true or not, but this is how I, I feel. I feel like I'm one of the most out about it members of our party. So I was like, if there's going to be gay content, I have to be the one to bring it, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. love y'all, love y'all. <laughs> but I, I play with all the men, and so I'm like, okay, oh. here's, here's my little envy changeling um or like oh yes raging bisexual i'm going to be you know i was like i feel like i have to bring like all of my characters have to be queer mm. in some shape or form in order to bring that representation you know and this isn't to say that straight folk can't play our modules they can't, it's not to say that they can't, if they choose to pick one up and they go, oh, I don't want to play a bisexual, it isn't that they can't change it themselves. I would prefer that they played what was in the books, but if it makes them more comfortable that half the table do, half the table don't, then at least they're still trying. So, as far as I'm concerned, it's unambiguous and there's no question that it's gay as fuck, but how people choose to play it. That's up to them. Yeah. I think y'all pretty much answered most of my questions without even having me to ask them. <laughs> we do love uh, rambling, don't we? But it's great. Right. It's lovely. I, I love it. I'm here for it. This has been such a great time. So interesting. I just want to sit here and have you guys just word vomit to me, like all of your, <laughs> all of your content and be like, yes, yes. We do have a, a fun one coming up in September, which is mm -hmm. Selena's Socketed Items. I got fed up of crap in the bag of holding. Yeah. Like, how many swords do we have? No, we sold them. We did have at one point like 12 generic swords and then 12 filigree, slightly fancier generic swords. And we just managed to like steal a bucket ton of swords for some reason. I can't remember why. But it was like, these are junk and unfortunately we've sold them now and we're actually overpowered in our current campaign so i won't use this module there but it was like what could we do with them 
And we came up with the idea of creating an NPC who takes this generic item, puts a fancy thingamadoodah, which I won't give too much away on, but it puts a thingamadoodah on your generic item. You put a gem in it. It's not generic anymore. It is a magical item that different gems have different properties. It could be on a sword. It could be on a ring. It could be on a necklace. It could be on a pair of glasses, a diadem or something. So, for example, one of the examples that I gave was like, let's say I'm a rogue. Our party mm -hmm. has no healer and I'm tired of ending up on my face in every single fight. So I could go and get, let's say, a ring socketed with a specific gem because I know it's with specific items with specific gems. So a ruby of a certain kind in a ring does something different than a ruby of that same kind in a different item, which like does something uh, different armor. than an emerald. Yes. in those items as well so i could get certain items socketed i could socket one of my daggers so i could have some low level healing um abilities that i could use and then i could socket something else so maybe i get slightly more hp and because of the way that it's structured with limits to how many sockets you can have and how much you can do it keeps the players from becoming overpowered so it's a nice way to customize your character and sort of spice it up a little bit without it going completely overboard and then you could have fun little shopping scenes with their wizards and be like, oh, I gotta go buy things? Oh, me too. Yep. Let's go. You gotta yeah. love some we're nice going gem shopping. optimization. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's like, oh, we know that we're going to an ice place. Why don't we see if we buy a generic sword or piece of armor or ring or something, we buy something generic and then we go get fire stuff installed on it. Or something if we're going to... Um, a nature area we're going to a forest or a jungle we might get something that has i don't know necrotic damage or something that would particularly hurt plants if there was plant monsters there they could imbue their weapons if they had some kind of idea ahead of time where they were going with something that might give them advantage and just tip an overbalanced or misbalanced or deliberately i'm implying here battle in their favor because i would do that every time never play one of my monsters they're evil scold has to pull me back constantly she's like no kill you're gonna kill like the entire part i'm like yes <laughs> she's like no pull it back <laughs> most the just fine line going, like... between good combat and a tpk <laughs> I'm like yep. cool looks good looks interesting also the cr on this is way off <laughs> yeah you're about seven <laughs> levels too low there cow i'm like no yeah. i'm sure i'm not <laughs> <laughs> yes <sighs> I'm the TPKR Skuld is the, the brain of reason sometimes most of the time in fairness it is true because the first three times that uh, Steph played through the Tower of uh, Tower of, which one is it? Tower of the Soul Soul thank yeah. you the first three times she played through that each session was a th TPK she's like hell it's overpowered sorry fixed it it'll be better now no, nope, another TP cow's like, sorry, fixing it again. I'm just going to take them down by half. There you go. No, nope. cow, TPK. These were level 20s. We're level one. I was like, I'm sure they're not level 20s. You got us all dead in like two hits. I was like, right, yeah, cool. Okay, um, lowering it down. Yeah. <laughs> it's good fun. Bit of a learning curve, I see. Yeah, but... yeah. That's, that's what Scold's there for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um... I, I, I'm I just still stuck on the whole, like, the whole, like, queer focus spells. Can mm. I just get a little bit more about that? Because that, I think that's really interesting. That's more your area of expertise, Kel, mm. if you want to. Yeah, we, oh god, I have so many. There's, they're all focused in different ways. So some are healing ones, like Cape of Courage. That one we use in our current campaign. I love it. Um, Cape of Courage, you it doesn't do you a whole lot. It's a cantrip. Or is it first level? No, it's a first level. Um, so it does 1d4 healing. <laughs> Oops. I'll be right back. I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. You're good. I should actually open up Sapphix while we're here, just that I actually know a couple off the top of my head that are instantly like, hey, there's that one. Seeing as Sapphix is uh, 
going to be what's coming up. Uh, that's next year, isn't it? Oh, Luke Gremlins. I can't wait for Luke Gremlins. sorry we got That's a package okay. and my dogs were like well we gotta go get them <laughs> it's absolutely fine um so the gay spells we have huh, ironically we have a kickstarter in january next year that is two different spell books of cantrip to second level and then third to fifth i think it is which is 100 spells per book um and one of them there's a cantrip which is body modification so a willing creature you touch gains or loses a gender specific body part for example breast tissue could dissolve and the skin reshape to accentuate underlying pectoral muscles um i won't go into the rest of it but that's an example um we've got oh hateful respite this one, you point at a creature within range. If they are hostile to the car caster, they make a wisdom save. Um, and it has no effect on queer allies, non-hostile or charmed creatures. So it's specifically, if someone is being hateful towards you, then they will get hurt and you're safe. Party rain. <laughs> um, <laughs> this one, I probably shouldn't have made this one really. Matt is having far too much fun with this in the campaign that we're playing. There's a gif of a 80s looking gentleman with a tash that throws up glitter and goes um, that gets used by a fair few gay folk. This spell is literally the D&D equivalent of that. You point at a space within range and you make a hand action as flamboyant as possible and confetti falls over the 10 foot uh, radius centred at that point. So he's constantly going and covering us all in glitter. We look very fabulous in the campaign. Um, and this, it, they're all kind of going along those lines. There's um, rainbow layer, which is you point at a space, blah, blah, blah. You create a 30 feet long, five foot wide spectacle of vibrant waves of, bleh, waves of light dancing. All the creatures in the space must make, make a wisdom 10 saving throw or be hypnotized. So okay. it's like, hey, here's a rainbow. Get hypnotized by it. <laughs> um, and there's there's loads of different ones like that, basically. Wow. Okay. So that one's that one's coming out in um, make one hundred on Kickstarter on January. Yeah. Yeah. So there's two books full of a hundred spells in each. Wow, y'all y'all are really like. Basically, if you're interested in our stuff. Stay tuned because every time we finish a Kickstarter, as soon as it gets sent out, there's going to be another one in the works immediately after. Everything is lined up all the way through 2025. So if you like the stuff, stick around because there's always going to be more. We've done all the writing. The problem is we don't have the art. We don't have the layout. We're getting there. So yeah, but the, the Kickstarters are to fund the art and the layout. And yeah. while they're going, as soon as we know that we've hit the goal and we're going to get that, we can then go, great, you start this and most people are agreeing that they'll be paid at the end of the Kickstarter so that we can have everything done and ready to hand it straight over to people. It's, okay. uh, it's yeah, yeah, so we've got all that side of our side of things done. It's needing everyone else, and that's what Kickstarters are for. Okay, so is Kickstarter a good people, good, good people, good place for people to go to go check out like future projects that you guys are going to come out with and. They'll certainly be on there. They can follow us on Kickstarter, Awfully Queer Heroes, or on Twitter. We scream about what we're doing a fair hefty amount, or on our Discord. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Um, well, it has been an absolute pleasure to talk to you guys. Thank, Thank you. you for you. coming out. And yeah, guys, make sure you go check them out. Check out their content. I probably will be because <laughs> i could, could always use a little more gay in my life especially a dnd always always but yeah Absolutely. come say hi we love the chat yeah. don't be shy come say hi please do All right. twitter yeah. discord i chat to everyone we chat to everyone yeah all right 
So I guess that's about it. Thank you so much for your time today. Great. I really appreciate yeah. you wanting to talk to us. Thank you oh, for having us. Absolutely. Thank you, thank you for coming out and letting me ask you a bunch of questions. And <laughs> of course. <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Thank you. Bye.